I know tonight I sound no better than the ring announcer when he was trying to introduce Edge, but the open itself, it was more of a fight between Triple H and Edge. The returning Edge was there to put over Daniel Bryan, but Triple H got involved and it was a big fight between those two. In result though, we get the main event made, which is Daniel Bryan one-on-one -on -one against Dean Ambrose. To me, I was looking forward to that match. You could complain about the direction of the Shield, but think of it this way. Dean Ambrose is in the main event of Raw and going up against an ex-WWE champion, ex-World Heavyweight champion and a number one contender. So that's going to be a great spot for Dean Ambrose. But the big problem about this was Dust Edge is part of Raw done dusted. That's the last time you see him tonight. But never fear, he's been booked to go to SmackDown. How do you viewers feel about Curtis Axel? The WWE make him a Paul Heyman guy, the Intercontinental Champion, and they put him involved in big names with the WWE. But like on SmackDown, he lost to a guy who many fans complain about because of his status in the WWE. Kofi Kingston. They believe that Kofi Kingston is never going to advance anywhere higher than the mid card or the tag team. If that's true, why are they having him beat Curtis Axel? Is that making Curtis Axel look bad? I don't know, but it just makes me wonder why is Curtis Axel being used this way when he's got a look that he could go further than the WWE? Tonight on Raw, it's almost like he can't get the job done, so he starts going frustrated on Kofi Kingston. But I don't think it's the match that's important. Yes, it made Curtis Axel look bad, but after the match anyway, Paul Heyman has a slippery accident backstage. We go through this comedy story where Paul Heyman brings in his own doctor to examine him and say he has to be pulled out of the match at Night of Champions. Brad Maddox, the board GM, brings a WWE doctor to examine him and he's totally fine. You know, you could tell this by a mile off what was going to come from this, but at least this was a way to get CM Punk on TV as he comes out with a kendo stick to chase a Paul Heyman who's running away fine and to attack the fake doctor. Okay, so the night champions match has is gonna go ahead, but couldn't CM Punk have a match? Maybe a comedy match against the doctor. I don't know, but I think CM Punk could have had a bit more than a kendo stick attack before the pay-per-view. But overall, comedy, funny, got the right wrestlers involved on the Gaim show. We've seen things like this done before where a wrestler has said or done something within the WWE or out the WWE and they get punished for it. It's just a shame it's ha it happened to a wrestler who, yes, he may have said something in an interview the WWE are not happy with, but Dolph Ziggler is a guy who was once the world heavyweight champion and could quite possibly rebuild his way back up to it but because of this incident are the WWE going to make that happen anytime soon if not it looks like Rob Van Dam may beat Del Rio which is not a bad thing because that would just mean a RVD as a Damien Sandow feud somewhere down the line but tonight in war Bray Wyatt, a character that I do enjoy, I like, I look forward to, defeats Dolph Ziggler. Disappointed, but like the fact that Bray Wyatt got that big win in his career already. But the thing that's missing is, as much as I like Bray Wyatt's character, I'm looking more for his exclamation on his attack and takeaway of Kane.
that feud will continue, but just not at Night of Champions, probably later on, like Hell in the Cell. Okay, I'm going to try and be a little bit nicer to the Divas this week. Yes, it got the Divas involved, building up towards Night of Champions. Good goal there. And it's nice to see how many Divas we actually have in the WWE, as Naomi, Natalia and Brie Bella take on Exana, Alicia Fox and Layla. It weren't a good match, but it really special. But like this night should be about, getting the Night of Champions wrestlers involved, looking okay, and providing us with some sort of match or entertainment. Let's go Divas. Before World Heavyweight Champion Alberto Del Rio defeats R-Truth, there's a few things I want to say. Number one, R-Truth's rap got cut short. When the match begun, he was all in the ring, finishing his rap off. What the hell, WWE? Do you not know how entertaining that rap sometimes is for us viewers? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? There's that. And then we have R-Truth, who looks pretty good against Del Rio. Pretty good. I enjoyed the match. Go R-Truth. And Rob Van Dam looks high. Not a good start if you are continuing with your bad habits, RBD. But, you know, RBD says how he's going to go on and become the World Heavyweight Champion. Good luck. <laughs> no, it could happen because it makes sense. A face World Heavyweight Champion versus a heel Mr. Money in the Bank makes sense. But I still think that the Del Rio and RBD match, I really don't really care. The outcome might be good though. You know how bullies like to sometimes steal your lunch money? Well, on Raw, I'm sure the bully Ryback would be stealing something else from Rob Van Dam. But luckily that didn't happen as Rob Van Dam defeated Ryback. When the WWE use the Goem show properly, build the pay-per-view up, announce final matches at least if they haven't done it beforehand, I give them credit for. Like tonight, we get a kickoff pre-show match announced. The primetime players versus the real Americans versus Tons of Funk versus the Usos versus 3MB. And I'm looking forward to this. At least the pre-show match is build up for a actual championship match for later in the night. It's just a shame that one of the wrestlers involved in the number one contendership ends up losing to the very entertaining, very funny Santino Arella. And as great as it was to see him back, it's just a shame that Cesaro had to lose. Yes, Cesaro may have done a massive swing, going around about 10, 20 times, and making Santino dizzy. Santino still picks up the win by returning his Cobra, and ends up, by the end of the match, defeating him. Okay, great. Cesaro, you suck. I don't know what the WWE are doing this to you, but if you somehow become the new number one contenders, to face the shield at Night of Champions later in the night. Good luck. As much as I would like to celebrate that our uh, Mr. Money in the Bank, Sandow, defeated The Miz, I'm not going to because it was all because of a distraction from the entertainer, Bandango. If all he's going to do is dance and be a distraction in matches, I'm, I'm just thinking, what the heck? This feud is not interesting me. Miz was Fandango. Fandango's not interesting me. So what's the point? Throughout the night, the WWE were throwing so many video packages at us to make the return of... Cold dust. Look like a really big deal. But when he actually does return, he cuts a promo to Randy Orton and says, by end of the night, you will not forget the name... 
and after a good luck wish from Triple H, he goes into the match and no real surprise loses to Randy Orton. And even though the match was entertaining, with my favourite spot, the RKO transforming into the crossroads, we still have the Randy Orton picking up the win and that's it. Cody Rhodes this time round is not getting his contract. I'm sure there'll be other situation steps of how Cody Rhodes can get back to the WWE. I don't think this is the end of Cody Rhodes just yet. And to make matters worse for Goldust, he couldn't get the job done, so Stephanie McMahon rubs it in even more by naming all the people he's let down. And you have Goldust leaving the arena crying. So for a match, it was okay. For a storyline reason, it was even better. So I'd say having Goldust come back for this reason was a good move. Now for the main event, which I'm sure, if you're like me, was really looking forward to. We had the WWE number pretender Daniel Bryan versus the uprising US champion Dean Ambrose. It was a great match, good spot, entertaining, good storytelling from the big story in the WWE right now. We had a massive spot where Daniel Bryan did a backdrop to Dean Ambrose, really got the crowd with the match, with the moment. But when Dean Ambrose started shouting, stay down, stay down, stay down, I thought, okay, this is where it finishes. And that's where it comes. Daniel Bryan manages to pick up the win. And as soon as the match is over, out comes Randy Orton. I expected there to be something more to the end of this. Because sometimes in the night, you had a bit of story on the big show. A bit of story on Randy Orton. So you expected there to be a bigger finish. And for a go-home show. As Randy Orton comes down, he does the whole heel tactic. And stop right before the ring. Where Daniel Bryan does his famous dive through the ropes. And that's where he gets beaten by the shield. And Big Show in the night was told to stay away. Do not touch the shield or you're finished. You're screwed. You're gone. So there was a bit of story there. And Randy Orton ends up RKOing Daniel Bryan. Same as the last few weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Big Show is ordered by Triple H to get back in the ring and knock Daniel Bryan out. And, you know, this whole using Big Show to get the job done, to get Big Show to do the dirty work when you've got Randy Orton and the Shield there, I don't think it's more to get Big Show something to do. I think this is all building up to a possible Survivor Series map. If it is, they're doing it nice and steadily. It's growing over the few weeks. Good idea. I'm liking it. If it does not come to that way, then this is making Big Show look worse. Because all this crying, this, well, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it. You know, it gets a bit ridiculous. And I really felt he was going to knock out Orton and get another storyline separate for Big Show. But no, he ends up playing the ring, leaving the ring once Daniel Bryan's knocked Orton out. So finally, Daniel Bryan gets revenge. But where was Triple H? One minute he's on the ramp, next minute he's gone. Over the last few weeks, Triple H has been enjoying watching Daniel Bryan get beaten up. But for this week, he clears off before the job is complete. It's a little mistake there, I believe, but for a finish... Daniel Bryan fans can be going yes, 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 because Daniel Bryan has now got something over the corporation. For a go-home show, it covered what was needed. It covered what was needed. For the big returns, Goldust, good story there. Edge, yeah, we're getting him on SmackDown. Hopefully that will increase the viewership there. But he didn't really do much. I was expecting a interference in the end. Maybe one last spear. Christian got taken out. But you see, there was a few things could have been done differently. But not a bad show. Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And as you can hear, 
my voice is really not doing that well so I'm gonna go and rest it thank you very much for watching I love you like you love me <laughs> goodbye